Welcome back to the shop. Today's video is going to be uh, hopefully less complicated than the last one. I've got a uh, this is a simplex. Um, it's really hard to tell. I know that simplex made a lot of big jacks back in the day, and uh, it's really hard to make out what's going on there. But I think this is going to be a candidate for the sandblaster. Um, and it might, might actually serve some purpose for me. Typically, I don't have much application for a jack this big. However, I just bought a, a another pickup truck, and it needs a little bit of work. And I'm terrified of getting crushed by a vehicle, so I always have jack stands underneath them and whatnot. But you know, you can't have enough stuff underneath the vehicle, as far as I'm concerned. If I'm underneath it and something collapses or whatever I sure as hell don't want to get crushed but anyway I'm gonna disassemble this and degrease it and uh, sandblast it and I think this should make a a nice restoration I think it'll look good painted up and uh, maybe even come in and touch these letters up at the end but, uh, but anyway this should be a fun one So I've got it in the parts washer, we'll see how that does it. It puts out a pretty good amount of fluid, and uh, I'll let it rinse and try to get off as much of the grease as I can. I went through and chiseled off some of the hard grease that I could find. Again, you want to try to minimize the amount of dirt that you import into these parts cleaners, otherwise you're just going to be pumping mud. And I've had this thing for years, and you can see that the, the chemical is sort of clear, because I don't throw wheel bearings full of grease in here and stuff. Clean all that out as best you can ahead of time. And then, and then bring them over here. And, and I know this is probably repetitive for a lot of the guys that watch the channel. But uh, the other thing I do is I have a fuel filter, a big cheap fuel filter that I poke some holes in the bottom. And that helps filter things out in addition to having some filter media down in the bottom there. Like I think I have a big wool sock or something like that. Um, but I don't want to have any suspended metals or anything being injected into bearings and stuff when I'm cleaning them out. But, uh, but anyway, that's the parts washer. I'm going to keep cleaning this up and then dry it off, and then I think next cut from here will be into the sandblaster. Alright, so I had a couple problems with the sandblaster. The, the the sandblaster that I have is called a blasted on and it has a reclaimer, which is like a giant shot back on the back. And and somehow, somehow a trailer hitch ball ended up in there and fell down and disconnected the hose and I had to go reconnect everything and all this the media piled up and anyway I was out there fiddling around with it for 15 minutes trying to see what was going on because it wasn't blasting like it should anyway, it's blasting great now. So um, so anyway, it did a pretty good job taking that down. Um, I can't make out the writings on this. The casting has, was apparently either very, uh, maybe it was an old casting or something like that, but it says uh, Reg US Pat Off. So what, what, what? I guess the US patent was off of it. And then it has, let me see if I can get it up there. Hold that still enough for you to see. 2 by 14 and and I don't know what this says. It's B-A-R, B-A-D, so I don't know. I'm gonna have to just scour the internet and uh, and see what this thing, see if I can figure out who made it. And this sort of presents a an issue for me because if I were to go back and try to highlight this to try to pencil these things in or use the brayer I wouldn't know what to write, by and large. I, I, the 2x14 is pretty clear, I and mean, maybe this US patent off stuff, but, but this center part, I wouldn't know what the heck to do. So, uh, anyway, um, I'm, I'm tempted to use the chromatic paint again, and uh, but, but I don't know, I've actually had pretty good luck with the Krylon 
and uh, without a primer. So anyway, I'm going to figure out what the painting uh, scheme is going to be for this and bring you back. And uh, I think while I'm doing the painting, I'm going to wait for this to, well, i got to clean this up again because I sandblasted this part and there's some, some uh, wear marks for this bar that went in here. And I'm going to grind those off because there's just no point in having those. So I'm going to grind that off and probably polish this section. I have a, uh, oh, yeah, I can get this down. I have another jack that's, that's quite a bit smaller. This is a made in Japan jack, number five, something or other. And, uh, but this is a great, handy little thing. And uh, anyway, I sort of like the, the my, my older brother Nick did this one. Uh, I like the way he did it with the black here and then polish this section. So I'll probably uh, copy his scheme there, keep him consistent. So anyway, I'll bring him back when I've got, uh, well, I want to bring him back when I'm polishing this. So that's the 2x14 Jack Badger screw jack. You can see that I've, the light is horrible this time of day, but you can see that I sort of polished this knuckle down here, painted the top with the cryon paint, no primer on the top, and then the paint here, this is a gloss Rust-Oleum, just brush on, no primer, and it seems to be sticking pretty good. On the inside of this, I had some leftover truck bed liner from the Mueller box. So I went in and sprayed the inside with the truck bed liner. That should help keep down any residual rust on the inside. So so anyway, this has a, been a, a simple but, but heavy project. And uh, I think it turned out pretty nice. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Have a great New Year's. I forgot to mention this in the prior video. I am interested in knowing what you, uh, what all the viewers are working on and what they're interested in. And I recognize that the, the sort of, the, the startup costs, if you will, to, to start a YouTube channel and to start sharing all that stuff is, is sort of high. People don't have the time to, to maybe do projects on a regular basis or they, they don't have a computer powerful enough or the video cameras or whatever they need you know there's just a lot of stuff that goes along with it but that shouldn't necessarily preclude you from being able to share your content with people that that you sort of like similar things so to that end I think this channel might might sort of act as an intermediary where those of you so many of you who who actively participate in the comments and whatnot that that, that like restoration and refurbished tools and things like that you know I, I appreciate the comments thank you and, and if you have channels, I, I, I go out there and I watch other viewers. I watch 357, I watch Curiosity Forge, I watch Scoutcrafter, all these other guys. Ben Moll, um, you know, there's a, a Wireworks, all these guys. So anyway, there's, I, don't know if I forgot your name, I'm sorry. But anyway, if you have some project that you're working on and you would like to share it, email it to me. I'm going to put a link in at the end of this video with my email address. And if you want to tell me a little bit about the tool, that'd be great. Include a couple pictures. 
Uh, just do me one favor because I get a lot of emails. Uh, title it in the subject line, uh, viewer projects. That'll help me sort through things and make sure that I don't skip over you. Uh, this is this is sort of a, a project inspired by Bill and his Wilton 744 vice. He had emailed me and, uh, and sent me some pictures of that. And I, you know, I really enjoyed that. So I think I want to sort of keep going with that. And and today's first round is uh. Courtesy of, courtesy of uh, Curiosity Forge. He really did a nice restoration on a pipe wrench. So, uh, so anyway, I'm going to include that. And again, if you've got any pictures, or if you don't, take some pictures, send them to me, and I'll be happy to include them at the end of, of my videos. And, and this will sort of evolve um, as I see how participation, sort of how many people participate, and what intervals and frequency and such. But anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Have a good New Year's.